Hello and welcome back to RC Model Reviews and today I want to talk about the Blackout Mini H Quad. Where is it? So small you can lose the damn thing. Here it is. The Blackout Mini H Quad. And what can you say? It's small, it's an H-style quad, it's made of carbon fibre. Yeah, that's it. <laughs> but actually there's a lot more to say. The design of this little quad is quite outstanding. I'm very impressed with the way it's been engineered. There's a, a lot of thought has gone into the design of this craft and as a result it's very easy to build and it is incredibly strong you've seen well there's videos i've mentioned in my last weekly news the videos you can see of these things flying into all sorts of objects and surviving and i'm going to give you a bit of a close-up look at some of this quad so you can see for yourself just how well designed how well engineered it is so here is the blackout mini quad give you some close-up so you can see what's going on now first of all you want to look at the lovely shiny goodness of that thick thick carbon fiber bottom plate that is just gorgeous that is it's marvelous and look look at these arms they're three millimeters of solid carbon three millimeters i mean you probably drive over that with a truck and it wouldn't break them the motors on this one are blackout branded but you can use the tiger motors or the sunny sky motors both of which are actually really hard to get hold of at the moment because i think the the demand has way exceeded supply because the 250 quad thing has just taken off you know, like a freight train, everyone wants one, getting hold of them is becoming increasingly difficult. I've got my Mobius on here, and look at this, this is the little um, isolated platform for the Mobius. I mean, that is such a nice touch. It means your Mobius is up there. It, uh, I've taken video, there's some on my XJet channel, and it's rock solid, there's no jello, there's no shaking, it's just, that does such a wonderful job of isolating your Mobius. And of course, in a really bad crash, it'll just pop off, either the isolation things will pop out, or I've, I've Velcroed this one. In here, if you look carefully, you see there's a board camera in there and it bolts to this carbon fibre plate. But it doesn't just bolt to the plate, there's actually a rubber isolation system. So even the board camera is actually vibration mounted. And it means also if you have a really bad smack, it'll absorb some of the impact. But note carefully, it doesn't actually, with the lens cap off, it doesn't project past the front. So if you go straight into a concrete buttress, well, your camera might survive. I don't think it would, but it's a bit of extra safety. Now down here, we've got the receiver on the bottom and we've got the flight controller the nase 32 in this case on the top and yeah that was a real simple install all the, the pillars you know line up for the nase 32 i think the cc3d board also fits in there at the back i've just got an old um 200 milliwatt fpv transmitter that i've had laying around for ages just a standard one you know just one of the old ones and i made up my own uh, um, cloverleaf antenna here with some semi-rigid coax it works really well. I actually tried a commercial one. I won't name which one. Yes, I will. It was an um, it was a what is that? Um, yeah, immersion RC. Used an immersion RC, and I was getting a few dropouts. And I put my own one on there, and it's great. Just fixed it up. So maybe it was a bad immersion, but honestly, the immersions they're stamped rather than made from a proper thing. So they they do have some limitations, but they work fine for most people. Uh, on the battery side, um, I'm running a 1500 nanotech in here. Uh, it has to be high C rating. I found I tried some of the Zippy 35 C batteries, the 1500s and the 1800s, and they just didn't really perform in this application. I think the current draw from these little motors, which really put out a lot of power, I think it has a 3 to 1 power to weight ratio, but the, the Nanotechs, you need a very high C. My favourite battery, however, is the 1400. It's actually a Traxxas, labelled as a Traxxas battery, and it's a 40 C. And that's the best combination of punch and, and endurance that I've found. So I bought some of these 1500s because they came into stock and everyone raved about them and said, hey, they're the best thing. And yeah, no, I also got some more Traxxas and I'm preferring the Traxxas over the 1500. So it's a 1400. So yep, I'm happy. You can use any kind of battery. I've gone as low as a thousand milliamps, but unless you've got a really high C battery, you really don't get much endurance out of it. And the weight saving is pretty minimal because these things will carry a lot of weight. You know, those motors, they put out the power. So there you go. Um, what else? The, oh, the other thing I have to mention is this subboard in here. You'll see there's two boards. This is the carbon board, and in there there's a printed circuit board. Let me show you what I'm talking about. Here it is. This is called the power distribution board. It's a fiberglass circuit board, and built into this are a number of really nice features. It has some LEDs, which light up quite nice at night. You can give you orientation cues if you're flying line of sight. And it has a whole lot of built-in wiring for things like 
basically your battery will connect up here just your xt60 connector or whatever you're using for your battery and then there are some spare terminals i use those for my video transmitter and then at each where each arm mounts you've got two pads a negative and a positive for your escs so the wiring to your motors can, just has to come in this far you don't have to have a central distribution board for that then you've got video signal here so normally you're mounting your video transmitter at the back but your camera's at the front so instead of having to run cables all the way down through here it's actually built into this power board so the cable or the signal travels all the way through the board comes out the front where your camera plugs in it's really quite clever and it's really really effective it makes the construction of the thing so much easier as you can see more leds on the back and they light up nicely a little nice little piece of branding there too but yeah this board makes the construction really really easy the build is much simpler because of this board it's a clever idea and the result is that you end up with a with a machine that is just you know quick to build um, simple to set up and just flies so there it is, the Blackout Mini Quad. It's uh, expensive, yes. How much would you pay for this Mini Quad? Well, if you're gonna buy the, just the frame, then you're gonna pay 150 bucks, I think they are. Yep, $150. If you want the ARF, which is with the motors and the speed controllers and the frame, then prepare yourself, 380 bucks. Yep, I know a lot of you are going, what, 380 bucks for that? And I'd have to say, if I hadn't tried this, if I hadn't flown one, I'd have said the same thing. I'd have said, what? God, how can you charge 308? But having flown it, I would go out now and spend my own good money buying another one if this one, you know, got lost or stolen. I would, I would. There's more than 380 bucks worth of fun in this by a long chalk. Okay, you have to put a Mobius on it if you want to do recording video. You've got to put a board camera on it. You've got to put a flight controller in it, a receiver, FPV transmitter, battery. It's going to hit you over 450 by the time you get it to this state. Maybe even 500, depending on how much of this stuff you've already got. But you get a lot of fun out of this. Now, people go out and they spend $6,000 building and buying a model, turbine powered model jet. 6,000, 10 times that price. And I bet they don't have half the fun. And that's how you work out whether something's worth it or not. Not whether, gosh, it's small. How can you charge so much for something small? Because it's not the size. It's how you use it. <laughs> that's what my wife tells me. Um, so, yeah, I can't really fault it even the price even the price sounds high but it's reasonable because it's such a superbly designed and engineered piece of kit it's uh, just absolutely gobsmackingly amazing and i think they're on pre-order now um, as i say all the bits are so hard to get if you want one you're probably gonna have to pre-order it and you know when it turns up it turns up so yeah i'm loving this this is my favorite plaything, and it will continue to be so for quite some time now if you've got one of these already then hey why not talk, tell us about it in the comments. Have you got tired of it yet? I don't think I'll ever get tired of this. If you've done videos, of, you know, flying through trees or racing or whatever you do with it, just put a video link in the description or in the comments on this video. I'm happy to promote you know, other people's channels. And, and if you've got something relevant, like a video of your Blackout Mini H quad flying, stick a link in there. Other people hopefully will go and look at it. So in the meantime, yeah, I have to now get back to work with what work I can do. So it's time to put this down until after dinner and get back to the bench. Mm -hmm.